Um, what exactly is it that you find, where you find your singers being uncomfortable? Uh, the majority of them, they when I ask them, like, what's a song that you like or a song that you feel that you can lead, they just shy away from it or say, like, oh, I'd rather just sing backgrounds. Um, they're just nervous or afraid and I try to get them to understand that like church is one of the most forgiving places uh to be able to sing and sometimes be able to mess up yes yeah, sometimes I guess I should say but um I I mean I mess up and just got to sing through it but it's just getting them to understand that and be comfortable right so um what what are what do you think like how important when it comes to caring for the voice how does that work among the struggles that you face? What do you do to care for your voice, Michelle? Uh, caring for my voice, I, I'm i really horrible at getting enough hydration in. Um, so that's something that I'm always trying to push on myself to, to make sure that I'm drinking enough fluids and things. Um, and then just making sure that I'm not stressing it out uh, I'm not yelling at my son or my husband in the morning to hurry up and get ready or something, you know, just uh, <laughs> you got to um, make sure that you warm it up and that uh, I kind of sometimes do that in the morning or on a Sunday morning, like even while in the shower, just kind of starting to warm it up rather than going from rushing and getting ready, not talking, not singing, not doing anything, and then going straight into a service and trying to sing. Um, so I try to warm it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, what are some of the struggles that you find when you don't warm up? Um, it's harder to reach some of the pitches or to get to the sound, I guess, or it can just sound a little rough. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I tend to have kind of a hoarse voice. Um, my mom has the same kind of hoarse voice. So I notice that with if I'm dehydrated or um, it's allergy season right now. So the last month I've been really struggling um, with just the hoarseness or dry um, throat, um, post nasal drip kind of things that just um, kind of bug you when you're trying to sing. But um, those are main things that I, I just try to, to fight through. Um, how do you fight through it? Like you mentioned, I mean, we are in allergy season right now, high time mm -hmm. in the South, um, Texas particularly. What what do you do to combat that? Um, well, I try to take an allergy medication, but I take something really light like Zyrtec or Claritin, like nothing that's really strong and drying. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other ones, like the stronger Ds and Allegra D, Claritin D, like all those uh they dry me out too much. Yeah. Um, so things like that are using just the normal nasal saline, uh, just the regular saline and not medicated, um, things like that. And, mm -hmm. and just making sure to, to push fluids. I, I've, uh, thankfully have gone a, the year without getting really, really sick. Um, uh, because that's one thing, I guess, as worship leaders, you just dread getting sick. Um, and so, um, I've just found that, Keeping your stress low helps as well. Um, just making sure that you're not getting sick or putting yourself in positions to get sick. And thankfully, um, we live here in the South and there's a good amount of humidity in the air. Um, so that helps the throat as well. But um, it's tough. But I, I honestly, when you said we were going to be speaking about vocals and things like that, I was like, oh, this past month, allergies have just been really bad but at the same time I don't want to take anything too harsh because then I dry out yeah that's true uh, what about your team do you find that uh, is your team watching you like when you are like you're telling us right now about vocal care you know hydration medication what to do what not to do are these things being shared to your vocal team by you yeah I I try to sometimes send them little clips of videos on vocals or, cool. or hints, or we talk about things. Um, we don't do coffee on Sunday mornings, even though it's a little rough. Um, yeah. But I know one of my other vocalists, she's like, I didn't do coffee this morning. And 
And I know that you can do coffee. And, and I think on the daily train, you were talking about just making sure you're flushing it with, right. with plenty of fluids. But sometimes, you know, depending on how early your service is, maybe you can't get in yeah. all that fluid. So yeah. I just don't do coffee on Sundays unless it's a really, really bad morning. And I tell my husband, make me some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, and that's, that's good also provided that you don't sleep in too late for the service and you can't have coffee. Um, but yeah, yes. thanks. Uh, that was good. We, we did, I did do a video yesterday for our membership our university site uh, called Vocal Care. And I did address that issue as far as, you know, what to do, how much to drink. So you're right. It doesn't mean that you can't have coffee, all right? You're safe. You just have to have it way earlier and make sure that you, you know, drink a lot. Um, Brandy, what's up? Brandy Anderson, another awesome member here at WTTU. She says, before I sing, she's saying this on Facebook Live. Thanks, Brandy. She says, before I sing, I watch my consumption of high sodium foods. It's good. Uh, which tend to dehydrate me. So the day before I'm scheduled to sing, I eat healthier and simpler. Love that, Brandy. Thank you. And Therese, thank you too. She says, warm up is so important. Yes. Um, yeah. So Staying listen. away from... Staying away from like the spicy and acidic foods helps also, especially, or eating really late, um, eating late at night, sun, Saturday night, um, and especially if, if you're just getting overeating, yeah. um, that, this is the nurse side of me coming out, but, um, you know, you got, you kind of start to get those reflux issues and, and, uh, if you do have reflux issues, I encourage you to treat it because, um, all that eats away at your esophagus and stuff like that, and it can ultimately um, affect your singing voice also. How how does it affect your singing voice, acid reflux and that kind of thing? Um, well, I imagine with the damage that it does, um, then you're not able to um, have the same, the tissue isn't the same, or uh, maybe it it's just damaged, so it doesn't work the same way. Um, I don't know the scientifics behind it, but um, I just know that when I eat uh, spicy or acidic foods, um, I can feel it in my throat even the next day. Um, so with like the overeating and stuff, like your stomach acids can come up and acid on the throat is just, it's not a good thing, so I'd yeah. imagine. Cool, so um, you are a nurse. Right. Yes. Uh, by, and yes. what do you, by trade, what do you, what kind of nurse are you? What do you, what do you do during the day? Um, I work with a special class of individuals with special needs, um, autism, intellectual awesome. disabilities, um, and they live in community group homes where they don't necessarily live with their family. They live in a home with other individuals like them. And we have staff that help take care of them. And so I just kind of take care of their, their nursing needs, making sure that they go to the doctor. Yeah. That everything's being taken care of nursing wise. Awesome. So I see, you know, I think that all of us see right here, uh, the compassion that you have for people that God's giving you to care for in your day profession. <laughs> but also I see that in your church. What are some yes. of the things, what are some of the, and thanks for sharing that. What are some of the damaging things that you see that worship teams do to their vo their voices? Um, I think sometimes it can be trying to sing songs that are not necessarily in your range or trying to um, just really it's just stressing out the voice. Um, other things um, that they can do. Um, I guess just not being prepared or not warming up their voices or um, not taking the time to do exercises to relax their their muscles and their everything that goes into singing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not necessarily a great singer, and so um, I don't. I may maybe don't have all the lingo as far as being a great vocalist, but um, I do try to take care of what I do have. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Actually, that is spoken by somebody who does sing well, because most people who don't, who, you know, don't sing well and just talk about it, you get a different response. So, um, Michelle, I, I see your sincerity. I think that's awesome. Um, I want to read real quick, uh, what Brandy and Teresa say on Facebook live. Brandy says this, thanks. She says, before I sing, 
Um, well, no, she says, yes, no, no late night eating. Uh, makes me sluggish the next day. No energy for those Hillsong Young and Free songs. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And um, especially when you can't wake, right? All right, anyway. <laughs> so Teresa says, keeps the sinuses and throat clear by staying away from sugar for at least a few days before worship service. That's good, too, because thanks, Teresa, uh, the sugar, you know, uh, it can develop the phlegm. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you know, one thing I can think of right now, and I hate to say this for you folks, no ice cream on Saturday night. You know, because the yeah. ice cream produces phlegm. Get all that extra phlegm. Or Skittles. 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 Never thought yes. of that. Skittles. Starburst. All those. <laughs> That's too bad. So there goes your morning jolt, you guys. I mean, it's, you know, find it somewhere else, right? Um, maybe, uh, what I know, and I, this may sound crazy too, but, you know, there's some other things that you can do for the voice uh, that don't involve eating. And um, for me, because I, I go to the gym every day. Uh, Brandy laughs and she says, yes, yeah. she says, stay away from ice cream and dairy days leading up to singing. Absolutely. Um, I, I go to the gym about every day, but what I, what I've been doing for the longest time is that I also still run early, early Sunday mornings before I go to church. So I don't know. I don't show up hot and sweaty and stuff like that and be all gross, but I do run for maybe like a mile or two because, uh, when you exercise, you're, you're using your vocal muscles, whether if you realize it or not, because you're having to breathe and you're having to open up the chest. You're having to use your, your diaphragm to breathe and to learning for, for that foundation to be stronger. You have resistance, whether if you are running, lifting weights or any other kind of aerobics. And what I found is that as I run and as you run or walk the treadmill, whatever it may be, when you pulsate your breath according to the reps or according to how you run, that actually does strengthen your vocal abilities. And when you walk away from the exercise, you're much calmer, you have more energy, but I've noticed an improvement in my singing because I'm not having to re rely on, you know, so much of, you know, how much water do I need to drink to make me better when maybe physically I don't feel ready. So this is kind of a new thing that I don't think is not really talked a lot about as far as, um, you know, exercising, but, when you do breath control, it really does help improve that. Um, I don't mean to get on a, t uh, on a tangent there, but I just thought it was something important to inject here. Uh, let's get back to you, Michelle. I want to know this. Uh, can you think of like a, I mean, I can. We can all think of vo vocal mishaps that we've had, uh, you know, uh, hopefully no injuries on stage leading worship. But can you recall a time that maybe when you led worship and did not work out, uh, did not warm up your voice, and it just, whatever it was, happened. What was it? Actually, I just had one of those moments last week. Oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't a, it wasn't a Sunday service, but it was a prayer service, and uh, I went to sing, and I didn't have a voice. Um, oh, no. There was just something in my throat, um, and I had been singing. I think the, the pastor just took a break to kind of speak and say something, and so we went instrumentally for a couple of minutes and then when we went back in to sing I went to sing and the words kind of I just didn't come out and so I had to back off of the mic and and uh, gently clear my throat and then come back in and I had my voice back but it I wasn't expecting it and I didn't think that it was going to happen but as soon as I went up to the mic and went to sing there was there wasn't anything there and um, I mean it was during a prayer service it wasn't Sunday service, so yeah. um, maybe not as many eyes to see it or ears to hear it. But um, I mean, it's still as as a worship leader, it's stuff that you don't want to have happen to you, or it's kind of embarrassing. Mm -hmm. um, but so, I think it just had more to do with this little allergy thing that I've been fighting. Right, right. Awesome. Um, not awesome uh, that that happened. Another thing would yeah. be like not singing in the right key, but like you have your capo on the wrong key and you're going to sing and those kind of things. Uh, those are always ugly. Um, Very. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> happens, happens more often than what we would like to admit. Yeah. How do you roll with the mistakes, Michelle? Um, I just, 
I just stop sometimes, even if it means stopping right in between, even though we don't like to fix it rather than trying to fight through it and turn and tell people to change a key or something. Sometimes it's better just stop, smile, things happen. We're human and just go, go on. Um, it actually just happened to me this past Sunday. Um, during rehearsal, the last song, my capo was like on three and it needed to be on four. And so we went to start and it sounded okay during the instrumental because it was just a half step off. Yeah. But then when I went and then, you know, fighting the rest of the band because they were playing in another key and I just had to stop and real quickly, you know, just move my capo over and just went with it and it happens. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we try to bring those, the amount of times down that it's not happening every week. Yeah. Um, I think when it's not happening every week, then the, you know, the church is more forgiving. The team is more forgiving, but um, it happens and just yeah. keep on going. And, and sometimes I find that when some of those things are happening, sometimes those are the most powerful services that we have. It's almost like the enemy is trying to get you off a little bit because hmm. he knows that something big is going to happen. And so many times I just take it in stride and you know what, something awesome is going to happen. And, yeah. and most of the time it, it does, or yeah. during rehearsal, it'll be just a mess or different things. But when you start the service, make it about him. And when those things come up, you just got to roll with it and, and fight through it and just trust that, that God is, is wanting to do something and the enemy is just trying to keep it from happening, but he doesn't win in the end. So That's right. I love it. Thank you for that. And Brandy <laughs> says those mistakes can keep you humble. <laughs> and she laughs, and that's true. Um, so when you say that you stop, and you were talking about the capo switching, did you mean that did you stop and your band kept going or everybody stopped? Well, in that sense, the, the, in this time, I guess the whole band kept on going cause they okay. were all okay. I was Good. the one who was wrong. Good. Um, and most of the time I try to get the team like to keep on going. I know sometimes if I stop playing for some reason, like I drop a pick or just something, yeah. um, and they see that I'm stopping or pulling back, they want to stop too. And I'm like, no, 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 keep, keep going yeah. or um, unless we really need to stop, then I'll stop. I'm, I'm sure there's been a few times when we had to just stop, but but for the most part, um, it's usually just one person having to get back on track or whatever. But in this case, it was me. It's like a, it's like a scene in Star Wars. Somebody loses their pick, or the mic goes down. It's like no, and slow motion <laughs> comes out. You know, yeah. and like everybody wants to just hang on to that moment. What do I do? And you said the right thing. You continue regardless of the mistakes. And you're right. And when those mistakes happen, uh, thank you, Teresa. She just said, don't let it distract you from worshiping and leading. Absolutely. Mistakes, you know, they're, they're going to happen. There's not yes. a way that we can avoid them. I think, uh, Michelle, the, the trouble that we find ourselves in is that we don't know how to handle it when the mistakes come. Is that yeah. true for you as a singer? Yeah, and and you know, I think in the past when it would happen, I would say in between songs, like sometimes even say something, or even if it's not even, um, it could be a technical difficulty or something, you find yourself, um, or I would find myself like kind of bringing attention to it in the transition, where like, oh, you know, these things happen, but you know, God stays the same, or you know, just different things like that. But now I just, I find that I just don't bring attention to it anymore because yeah. sometimes the church doesn't even know because they're, they're, they don't necessarily have that ear for it. And there may be a few that do notice it, but don't bring more attention to it because um, then when you're already going on to the next song, then you have somebody thinking back like, wait, did what happened? Or, you know, things like that. Just, just go with it. Unless it's something that obviously needs to be addressed, but um, that's something that I've learned that yeah. like I used to point it out before and now, you know what, just smile through it and, and work right. through it. Yeah. The, I think among the worst things that we can do as vocalists, especially is to point it out and to say something during the service like, Oh, well, God loves us all the same. 
it's okay because the, the, some, because your congregation may be thinking, uh, well, what else is going to happen? Is something major going to like the roof going to fall in or something? You know, it puts them on edge. It can take them out of worship. Uh, for band members, I think band members, it's a little bit safer. Um, it doesn't. I still don't agree with them stopping and making a facial reaction because you know everyone will notice. But musicians have a little bit of more of a barrier they can put between themselves because they have an instrument. So if something goes wrong, they can step back a little bit and it's okay. But for you singers, for us singers and worship leaders, we're, you're up front. So the, the worst thing you can do is, yes, is to look at the problem, to make a facial reaction, or to point it out verbally. Because then, it, like you said, yes, it lets everybody know in the room there's a problem. And our job is to maintain a spirit of calm, of, of order, uh, to let people know it's okay. I've led, I've led worship in places and in one church in particular where the power completely went out. I mean, everything went out and it went black. And the awesome thing about it was that we continued worshiping and people in the church actually thought that we planned it. They thought that we shut the lights off. I'm not kidding. They thought we shut the lights off intentionally uh, to make a point, to just have quiet worship. Because some people actually came up to us and said, oh, that was amazing because the lights went off and we just worshiped anyway. And uh, did you guys plan that? And we're like, no, uh, no. well, yeah, kind of we did. Yeah, I'm glad that worked out <laughs> for you, you know. And, um, but I think that uh, most of all, uh, what what you're saying here, Michelle, what we're saying here together is that preparation is key. It gives us then that ability when mistakes do occur, when change does need to happen, we're able to roll better with those punches because we've made a way for it. Um, what can, let me just ask you, what do you think, Michelle, you can do differently now after hearing all that we've discussed today? What are some things that you can think of that you can do differently now to help you and your team? I think um, personally, just getting more knowledge in regards to vocals, um, where many times, because I do play an instrument, um, you know, you tend to, okay, well, I need to learn the song and how to play it and everything, but um, I guess gaining more knowledge um, about vocals and, and where I do have a team that likes to just mainly sing backgrounds. I think an area where we need to get more in is with like harmonies and stuff like that. And so the fact that I don't know too much of it, um, I tend to stay a little bit away from it where I have a couple of people who do like to harmonize, um, but one plays an instrument and then he's struggling between playing the instrument and singing. So um, then it's harder to harmonize when you're, when the other person's not always singing. Um, so just working on that and how I can better serve my team is in regards to vocals or maybe um, just taking a day where it's just the vocalists who come to um, rehearsal and let's just work on vocals um, because, I mean, I, I guess because I do play an instrument that, you know, you tend to look at instrumentalists and whether they're learning their parts or doing their preparation and everything, but at the same time um, putting that work into the vocalists and and um, making sure that, you know, that even that they're knowing the lyrics, because many times knowing lyrics um, helps you sing. When you don't know the lyrics, you, you can't necessarily always hit the range that you're supposed to hit if you don't know the next word that you're supposed to sing, mm -hmm. kind of just hanging on the ends of, of everything. So um, me personally, I think um, using more of the... Uh, the videos, like even with the worship team training, you know, videos and, and everything on vocals and just spending more time there. Um, we get really, really busy. And I think that um, I guess I'm having a little confession right now. <laughs> um, just getting so busy with things and, and not letting the vocals or the vocalists be the area that um, gets, you know, neglected or avoided. Um so I, I guess just learning more um, about how I can be a better vocalist and how I can better serve my vocalists. Awesome. So we have um, right here somebody who's, who's in the trenches weekly, daily, just like you, telling us the same things that we're going through. So mainly it's about preparation, um, taking care of yourself, 
taking care of your team. Right? Yep. Awesome. Uh, guys, we got this. Uh, Teresa also says, thanks, Teresa. You're a band member that sings and can teach harmony parts to your background singers. Yes. Um, anything that we can do to help our teams, uh, that's our job. And to keep on rolling, keep encouraging them. Um, so uh, we encourage you guys to do this. Check out what we have this coming week. Uh, we have a lot of things coming for you here at Worship Team Training and also Worship Team Training University. A lot of you guys have been uh, coming in. We thank you for that. We got more videos on the way, more vocals on the way here at the university site. Plus, uh, just wanted to say too, we have our new book out. Uh, you got to check out uh, two new things. The, uh, the book that's coming out right now that's released on WTTU, that's our new devotional called The Worship Priority. And you can get that at wttu.co slash priority. And for members, it's a free download if you've got a coupon. So like Michelle, Brandy, others that are on here, you can get it. Uh, also, don't miss Alva Copeland. Alva's going to be up this coming Thursday. That's in two days. She's going to be talking about vocal management. Alva is the vocal director and choir director over at Saddleback Worship in California. So it's going to be fantastic to have her. Can't wait. Uh, but, man, it's been fantastic to have you, Michelle. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me on. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, you know, she, Michelle, has been with us for quite a while now, uh, a recipient of our membership program at WTTU.co. Uh, can you tell us a few of the things, tell the viewers some of the things that you've been learning as a vocalist? Um, as a vocalist, it'd probably be to be prepared the most, um, doing everything that you can to be prepared. Um, and that's listening to the songs. Um, even if it's just in the car or in the shower, getting ready for work, whatever it is, um, knowing that and um, just making sure that you, you're you using as many resources as possible to, to help your voice um, just uh, to strengthen yourself and, and to strengthen your team as well um, vocally because... Um, I mean, when it comes down to it, God is speaking through us and, you know, just being prepared um, in the closet time and, you know, just making sure that you're spending that extra time with God. Because as worship leaders, you know, when we speak in between a transition or something, um, his voice can be coming through you. And, and so that's something that you just don't want to take lightly and, and just make sure that, um, that you're, you're using the voice that he gave you and, Thanks for that, Michelle. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here today. Love it. <laughs> thanks. You're welcome. And uh, guys, we thank you for being with us here at worshipteentraining.com and worshipteentraininguniversity, wttu.co. Check those resources out because they're there for you as worship teams, as worship leaders. This is who we serve, and we love you guys. Uh, be sure to check out all the links that are right here posted on Facebook Live. If you're not on Facebook Live right now, Facebook. Find us then at facebook.com slash worship team training and be sure to go back to our sites, worshipteentraining.com and wttu.co. Thanks so much. Please like and share this on Facebook. And thank you guys also for being here today. We love you and we'll see you back very, very soon.